Great. Thank you, guys. Um, so I hope the last, uh, the, the week, this week, specifically Wednesday and Thursday, I hope you guys got a lot out of it, having the chance to work with the high school students um, in this auditorium, also in the North Gym, um, being able to explore some things, having resources to talk to if you're having some issues. Um, the whole point of this week is really just to be nice to people. You know, treat people with respect, treat people nicely, treat people how you want to be treated. It's a basic rule that we all know, but not all of us do. So it's something that we should really reflect on and, and think about. Uh, with that being said, uh, the last activity for the Stand Up 7, 8 week, we have a guest speaker. Um, he travels around the country do, doing speeches for middle school kids, um, elementary kids, and high school kids. Um, and we just had the, the first assembly with the, seventh, with the eighth graders, uh, and now you guys. He did a great job. Um, he's excited to be here. And please welcome Jeff. Thank you. All right, cool. Now, uh, real fast, if you guys are in the very top, if you guys could do me a favor, come down to like the first few rows. I know, you guys are in the way cheap seats. I can't see you back there. So stand up, come on down. Like the first two rows in the balcony right there. You guys over there, just scoot down to the first like two or three rows. So come on down. That way I don't feel like I'm like, hello, 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 hello. I know, they're way up there. You guys are like, there's people up there? Cool. All right. Now, while they're moving, uh, my name is Jeff. But for those of you in the front, you, I know you're like, dude, you didn't say your name right. I know. I know. My name is spelled G-E-O-F-F. -F. Most people are like, dude, G-off. I know. Apparently, my parents didn't like me, so they gave me a name that was weird. So, uh, I am Jeff, or G-off. I'm actually from, not from California. Uh, I actually live in a place called Idaho. You're like, yay! <laughs> Idaho! Is that like Narnia or something? Like, I have no idea. Uh, potatoes. There you go. Idaho is famous for potatoes. Uh, I live up in the mountains, and you might notice that I'm a little bit furry, and uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but students, they don't call me by my name, they all call me Sasquatch. I know, my nickname is Sasquatch, so today if you talk to me, see me out on campus, you can call me Jeff, Geoff, or Sasquatch, I have no idea why. So, anyway. Uh, that's who I am. Uh, today's kind of crazy. I, I absolutely love what I get to do. Uh, I get to travel around the country and talk to kids, which is the coolest job ever. And uh, I absolutely love it because I get to hang out with people like you guys, and I get to like do a lot of traveling, which is really fun. And uh, the crazy thing is, though, that I, 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 I'm in so many different places. Like this week, um, let's see here. I start off in San Jose, California, and then I went to Sacramento, and then I went up to Seattle, and then today I'm here, and then next week I get to be in Minnesota all week. Last week I was in Ottawa, Canada. Yeah, I found out things about Canada. Like, do I have anybody that has friends from Can Canada or like are from Canada? Oh, sweet. Here's why Canadians are so cool. Are you ready? Here's a little lesson for you. Canadians are cool because in Ottawa, that's their capital for their nation, right? The ca capital of Canada. Uh, and you can walk right up to their, their parliament building, and their people are in, like right inside. You don't have, there's like, no security, you can just walk like, like right up to it. And the coolest thing about them is that all their buildings that they do government in are castles. And on their parliament building, they have a unicorn. <laughs> I know, I know, right? That's why Canada is so cool. It has a unicorn on the parliament building. I know. I'm, I'm pretty sure that if we put a unicorn on the White House, that America would all of a sudden be like, we love America. They've got a unicorn on the White House. <laughs> it would make a big difference. I don't know why, but it would. So I get to travel around, and I get to work with people, and I get to have fun, and that's kind of my job, which is really cool. Um, and I get to go to a lot of places more than one time. So like a few places I've been to a lot of times, and one of those places is um, Salinas, California, and it's, a, it's called Everett Alvarez High School, and I get to work with freshmen. And they're really cool, but a thing you need to know about Salinas, California, is that for, uh, I think, like five or six years ago, it was the uh, murder capital of the United States. It had the most murders per capita in the United States. And it's a tiny little farming town. Like, literally, you walk, you, you like, pull up into, like, Salinas, and you look around, and you're like, where's the people? It's a field, <laughs> right? But apparently, there's a lot of people there, and they had the highest murder rate per capita. I don't know how. So it's kind of a rough area just so you know. Uh, I get to go and work with our freshmen every year, and I absolutely love it because I've been there so many times that they just know me, and I walk on campus, and kids are like, Sasquatch, what's up? And they're giving me high fives, and it's every year I, I show up now, and they just like, they I do my thing, they do theirs, we have a great time. And I remember like the first year I was there, I had a group of students, I worked with their freshmen, and one freshman in particular stood out. 
mostly because he was kind of a big dude for a freshman. Uh, his freshman year, he was about my size. He's about six feet tall, about 215, 220. He was a pretty big dude for a freshman, and his name was Tim, but nobody called him Tim. Everyone called him DJ Cornbread. <laughs> I don't know why. DJ Cornbread was his nickname. That's just what everybody called him. And so I got to know him as a freshman, and then I came back the next year, and as a sophomore, he came back, even though it was a freshman or like freshman thing, uh, and he actually ran a sound system for me, so he played music and made sure the microphones worked, which was really helpful for me because I'm old and I don't know how to make stuff work. And so uh, he, uh, he did all that. He came back as a junior and led, and then again as a senior, he was a leader again. So I got to see him for four years, and he was amazing. He was this awesome, awesome guy, super cool, super talented. By the end of his senior year, he was about six foot six, about 260 pounds. Big dude. And I'm like, dude, DJ Cornbread, I bet your football coach loves you. And he's like, I don't play football. And I'm like, why not? And he's like, I don't like to hit people. <laughs> I'm like, he was like this big giant teddy bear. He was super sweet. He was like just awesome. Everybody loved him. And uh, I got to know him really well. And then at, at the senior year, at my last day there, and I'm like, Tim, I, man, I know you're going to do great things. You're going to be awesome. But I, I got to say I'm a little bit sad because next year when I come back, you're not going to be here. And you've been here for four years. And I, I wish you the best, man. You have an awesome life. I can't wait to see what you're going to do in the world. And so he left. I went on my way. I came back to the school the next year. I'm training the leaders in the morning to work with their freshmen, and guess who walks in through the doors? DJ Cornbread. He walks in, I scream like a little girl, I'm like, ah! Right, and I run over and I give him a great big hug, and everybody's like, dude, why are you hugging DJ Cornbread? That's just weird. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, he's awesome. How do you not hug this man? And so I was like, dude, what are you doing here? Why are you not in college right now? And he's like, okay, don't tell anybody, but these were my favorite days in high school, and I didn't want to give them up just yet. I skipped college to come here. <laughs> and I'm like, shh, don't tell anybody you did that. <laughs> and he's like, okay. So he, it turns out he had a bunch of the leaders because he just graduated. A bunch of the leaders were still his friends. And his brother was a freshman coming through. And so he knew his brother and all of their, his friends. And so he knew a bunch of them. And he goes, I just want one more year. And I was like, okay, fine. You can be here for one more year. And he came in and he helped out. And it was awesome. But this year, something was different. Something changed. All of a sudden, I had like a little five-minute break with my leaders, and I said, all right, leaders, five minutes, they're coming in. You have five minutes. Go to the bathroom, get a drink, do what you're going to do. Get ready in five minutes. We're going to rock and roll. And they're like, okay, cool. And Tim grabs six leaders, six guys, and they all run out to the center of the basketball court, and they huddle up basketball style. Their head's in towards the center, and they start talking, and then they all start laughing, and all at the same time, they go, and then they walk away. And I was like, what is this? And I didn't really think too much of it because it was just like seven guys. No big deal. And uh, all of a sudden, though, like our day started and they would want, like mix up and like there'd be like people over here and people over there and people over there. And all of a sudden they would see each other and they'd like, see each other and be like, and all of a sudden from bleachers like, and then it just kept happening. Every time they'd see each other, they would do this. And then I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of strange. But then at lunch, things got really weird. Yeah, all of a sudden, each one of those leaders grabbed like 10 freshmen, brought them down to the basketball court, and they had 10 little like freshman groups or like, like seven little groups, and they all like huddle in towards the center, and the leader starts talking to the freshmen, and all of a sudden, the freshmen start giggling and laughing, and the leader goes like this, and they all go, and now I'm like, okay, wait, what is going on? What on earth is this? Tim, come here right now. <laughs> and so Tim comes over, and I'm like, dude, what is this? Are you in a gang? I was worried, right? Because it's kind of a high gang population there. And he's like, no. And I'm like, dude, what is it? And he goes, okay, fine. And he pulls out his cell phone. He pulls up a YouTube video. And it's him and those six other guys in like a 1984 Honda Accord stuffed in the, the car together. It was like a little clown car, right? And they pull up to the drive-thru at McDonald's. And I'm like, okay, that's strange. And the driver orders one ice cream cone. <laughs> and I'm like, Tim, this sounds terrible. Seven dudes, one ice cream cone, that cannot be good. <laughs> and he goes, don't worry, it's okay. And he pulls up to the window, gives the McDonald's guy his dollar, gets the ice cream cone, and he looks at the McDonald's guy and says, excuse me, sir, but do you believe in unicorns? And the McDonald's guy goes, uh, what, I'm sorry? And he said, I said, 
do you believe in unicorns? And the guy looks at him and goes, no. And the guy goes, wrong answer. Believe! And drives off with an ice cream cone stuck to his forehead. And I'm like, dude, you guys seriously have way too much free time and way too much money if you're sticking ice cream cones on your foreheads. And it's just ridiculous, right? Please do not go to your local McDonald's, go inside, get an ice cream cone, and be like, yay! They will be mad at you. Go someplace else, okay? Do it there. Yeah, they didn't hurt anybody. They were just being goofy and silly. And I'm like, Tim, seriously, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And he goes, I know, but it was awesome. And so I said, so what is this then? And he goes, this means you're my unicorn. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's kind of sweet. And he's like, it means I I'm going to take care of you. I love you. You're important to me. You matter. And I was like, and this is all guys. <laughs> and I was like, that is the most beautiful thing I have ever heard. <laughs> And it was awesome because they didn't keep it for themselves. They taught all these freshmen. By the end of the day, we had 200 freshmen running around doing this to each other all over the place. They're like, I love you, man. You're my favorite person on the planet. I love you. And they're giving each other hugs. And like, they all had like little red dots on their forehead because like, yeah, so much. It was awesome because all of a sudden, those seven guys had one crazy moment that they shared with other people. And it changed the way that that school worked. It changed the way that those people interacted with each other because all of a sudden they started to believe in each other. They started to take care of each other. This just simply meant, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure that you succeed. And they started supporting each other. And it was the coolest thing because now all of a sudden you had all these people taking care of each other. They stopped like me being mean. They stopped doing mean things online. They stopped calling each other names. They started actually taking care of each other. And that school has become an awesome, awesome place. And I love it. And then it got me thinking, what would it look like, what would it be like if you knew every single person in this room believed in you? If you knew every person in this room had your back and was going to take care of you? All of a sudden, you guys are thinking like, I could fly. <laughs> we could make that happen. We could do anything because we'd have our, our people supporting us. And then it got me thinking, what would that actually look like? So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to do a little experiment with you. I would like to try a little experiment in support. Ladies and gentlemen, I have four chairs up here. I am looking for four brave volunteers. Now, just so you know, there is an element of danger in what I'm about to ask you. Some of you are like, oh yeah, bring it on, cool. All right, let me see here. How about, let me see here. How about right there? You, sir, come on up. Yep, come on up, come on up. You're gonna come up the stage, cool. There's one, let me see here. Um, let me see here. How about, how about in the green shirt back there? You, sir? Yep. Come on down. Come on down. Um, let me see here. How about, how about in the, in the, the, is that like a camo shirt? LC shirt? Yeah, yeah. Come on down. You, sir? Come on down. One, two, three. And let me see here. Uh, how about you, sir? In the, it's a black shirt. It says soccer. What does that say? Greater seven. Fender. Fender. Cool. Come on down. Cool, come on down. Awesome, okay. Tyler, what does it say? Oh, it is Fender. Yes, great guitars. I'm a guitar player myself. Awesome, cool. All right, sweet. All right, now, gentlemen, uh, real fast, what are your names? JT. JT. Josh. Josh. Thomas. Thomas. Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> awesome. Now, gentlemen, thank you for volunteering. Now, here's the crazy thing. Uh, what you're about to do could be a, maybe a tiny bit dangerous, but don't worry, I'm a trained professional. I saw it on YouTube. Okay, cool. What? <laughs> All right, now, I've got these chairs back here. I'm going to set them up a little bit differently, okay? I'm going to set them up a little bit differently. I'm just going to kind of put this one right here, kind of like this. I'm going to put this one over here, kind of like this. I'm going to have you move real fast, JT, there. So you're like, like that, real quick. Cool. And then I'm going to have uh, this one right here. Now, real fast, can I have you sit in this chair facing the audience? Yeah, just fit, sit in the chair facing the audience. Cool, like that. Cool. I'm going to have you scooch forward a little bit. He's building a static electricity chart. He's going to be like, <laughs> all right, cool. You're right there. Perfect. Uh, how about you sit in this chair facing me? Awesome. Excellent. Scooch forward a tiny bit. There you go. Cool. How about you sit in this chair facing me? Awesome. Cool. Cool. Good. And then you sit in that chair facing me. Perfect. All right. Now, gentlemen, uh, I need you to plant your feet like 
there's a spider behind you and you're about to jump out of the chair as far as you can. Don't worry, there's no spider, okay? Just plant your feet 90 degree angle at your knee, okay? So plant your feet, move back a little bit like that. Perfect, good, looks good, looks good. Actually, move your feet back a little bit, right about there, cool, cool. I'm gonna have you move your feet out a little bit, out a little bit more, right, right about there. Cool, perfect. All right, now gentlemen, in just a second, things are about to get a little weird. <laughs> They're like, oh, geez. <laughs> okay, here's what's gonna happen. In just a second, I'm gonna say go. When I say go, I just want you to go ahead and lay back on the lap of the guy behind you. <laughs> you volunteered. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, are you ready? Don't bang your head on the chair. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Lay back. <laughs> okay, yeah, don't bang your head. <laughs> I know. Okay. No, wait, I'm going to scoot you over just a tiny bit. You want to... There you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> They're like... <laughs> All right. Now, gentlemen... Uh, try and get as comfortable as you can. I know it's hard to get comfortable with somebody's knee in your spleen, but try to do your best, okay? Now, gentlemen, in just a moment, things are about to get just a little bit weirder, okay? <laughs> You're like, how much weirder can it get? A lot weirder, okay. Are you ready? Now, gentlemen, in just a moment, uh, you need to imagine that you have a quarter stuck in your butt crack. <laughs> Told you it was going to get weird. <laughs> And when I say go, your job is simple. You're gonna squeeze that quarter as hard as you can. Okay? You're gonna squeeze that quarter, and then you're gonna lean back. And when you do that, then I'm gonna take the chairs away, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> They're like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, no, wait. Before that happens, gentlemen, I need you to, to, to do something for me. I'm gonna say, do you believe? And you're gonna shout out, we believe! Okay, nice and loud, ready? Do you believe? I don't believe them, okay? Now wait, you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in the person behind you. You have to believe that they're gonna take care of you, okay? Right, one more time, you guys ready? Do you believe? Okay, cool, that's better. Now wait, they have to know that you guys believe in them. So I'm gonna say, do you believe? You guys are gonna shout out, we believe. Are you ready, do you believe? Awesome, okay. Now gentlemen, get ready. They're like, ah. All right, gentlemen, get ready. It helps if you cross your arms, cross your arms, and you're going to lean back hard on those legs. When they do that, we're going to count them now. We're going to go three, two, one, go. You guys are going to go absolutely insane like you're at a Justin Bieber concert. <laughs> or somebody cool, whatever you like, okay? All right, cool? towards him, okay? All right. All right. Now, gentlemen, it's about to get crazy. Are you ready? You guys help me out. Count down three, two, one, go, and then I'm going to take the chairs out and see what happens, okay? Are you ready? Are you guys ready? Help me out. Three, two, one, go. Squeeze. Oh, my God. Cheer, cheer, cheer. Oh, my God. That's one. Oh, my God. That's two. What the heck? That's three. Push up, push up, push up. There Oh, yeah! Look at that! We don't let go. <laughs> They're like, I'll put those back. Usually, I just let you sit there for like 10 minutes, but no, I'm not going to do that for you. All right. Cool. Woo! All right. Way to go. Gentlemen, go ahead and sit up. Oh, yeah. Give it up for him. Gentlemen, come down. Take a bow. Take a bow. Take a bow. Give it up for him one more time, you guys. Give it up. Awesome job, you guys. Way to go. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So much fun. <laughs> now wait, ladies and gentlemen, please. I'm a trained professional. I saw that on YouTube last night. Do not go home and try that. Go to a friend's house. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the thing. It's so funny. By the way, I have to let you know, I just did that with the eighth graders. Guess what? The eighth graders fell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were like, yay, we got it, we got it. And all of a sudden one goes, and then, and then there was like a puddle of kid. It was awesome. Now, it's so awesome. You guys have to know that when we do something like that, something crazy and insane, that there is the possibility of catastrophic failure. And, and it happens. It happens. But you have to be able to support yourself and somebody else. You have to believe in your own power to change. And here's the crazy thing, is that if all of a sudden one person fails in that activity, everyone fails. What if we started to think about life like that? What if we thought about school that way? That if one person started to fail, that meant all of us were failing. I can guarantee 
that you would not let anybody fail. You would support them and take care of them. If somebody fell down and started to fail, you'd be like, nope, come on, we'll pick you up and we'll help you out. We'll do whatever we can to get you up to speed. We would take care of each other because we believe in each other. And that's a huge thing. Now, here's the crazy thing is that I actually started to learn about support and taking care of people in like the sixth grade. Now, I had an awesome family and lots of tons of support that way, but I had a couple of friends in the sixth grade and they were a little bit different. I had a friend named Corey and a friend named Mike. Now, if you looked at Corey, you automatically thought he was like the coolest person on the planet just because of the way he looked. Like he always had new really cool shoes. He had awesome pants. He had crazy shirts. Uh, he had awesome hair. He was good at sports. As a matter of fact, in my sixth grade year, it was the first ever Air Jordan basketball shoes. They came out first time Nike named a shoe after somebody else and they were called the Jordans. First pairs. They were so awesome. And my friend Corey got them. And I was like, dude, you got the new Jordans. He's like, yeah, they were expensive. And I'm like, really? How much do they cost? And he's like, 150 bucks. And I was like, you paid $150 for a pair of shoes. And he's like, no, I got two pairs. And I was like, dude, can I borrow them? He's like, no. I get it. He didn't want my stinky Sasquatch feet in his shoes. It's totally understandable. Uh, he had the coolest pants. Like nowadays, you guys have like jeans that are fitted, like skinny jeans and stuff like that. We didn't have those. No. And in, in when I went to eighth grade, no, you or seventh grade middle school, you guys, you had to take your pants and you'd take the bottoms and you'd fold them over and you'd roll them up just like this. And it was cool. You guys are like, no, it's not. I know. It's funny because some of you are actually starting to do this again. The 80s are coming back. It's our sweet revenge. Oh, yeah. It's not cool unless you're riding a bike. All right. Uh, he always knew how to do that. Whenever I did that in the sixth grade, like, it looked like I had a growth on my leg. And people were like, dude, what is wrong with your leg? I'd be like, nothing. And I'd like, stop. Uh, he had the coolest shirts. In my sixth grade year, it was something called a hyper color T-shirt. And a hyper-color t-shirt was like a bunch of different colors, kind of like a tie-dyed shirt. But you could take your hand, put it on your friend's back for like five seconds, take your hand away, and there, in a different color, was your handprint. Yeah, it was a shirt that changed colors. I'm pretty sure that they don't make them anymore because they were like radioactive, and everybody that wore them became a teacher. It was our penance for being cool. <laughs> I know. Here's the other crazy thing. He had the most amazing hair. It was short and spiky on top with long golden curls down the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the most beautiful mullet you'd ever seen, people. <laughs> it was seriously gorgeous. He had naturally blonde hair, and it was, he had like natural ringlets. And like he'd do this in the hallway, flip, and the girls would be like, ha. Ah. <laughs> Anytime you saw him in the hallway, he looked just like this. Actually, sometimes he would look like this. Yeah, if you were lucky enough to be one of his friends, every once in a while, he'd look at you and be like, what's up, dude? And you'd be like, oh my gosh, he totally just said, what's up to me? Woo! <laughs> and you'd be like, totally excited, right? Now, that was my friend, Corey. My friend, Mike, was just a little bit different. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> the first thing you noticed was his hair and not for the good reasons. His hair was crazy and wild all over the place. It was, it, it, was, it was like an eagle had tried to build a nest on top of his head every single morning. That's what his hair looked like. You'd be like, dude, Mike, your hair is crazy. I know. Are you gonna fix that? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> um, Mike wore glasses and a lot of people wear glasses, but Mike was actually legally blind so if he took his glasses off, he could only see about a foot and a half in front of him, and then everything else disappeared. So his glasses were super, super thick. He would stand in the hallway, and it was like having magnifying glasses up to his eyes, so his eyes were like always this big. <laughs> yeah, he'd just sit there and stare at you in the hallway, and you'd be like, dude, you're freaking me out, man. And then he would blink, and he'd be like, bloop. You're like, whoa. I'm pretty sure he did that on purpose. It was hilarious. Um, if he ever wore a button-up shirt, right, like a, a fancy shirt with collar and stuff and buttons, he never got the buttons in the right holes. Yeah, some of you are like, I've had that problem. Yeah, he was never like one button off. He was always two buttons off. Yeah, like one side way up here and then the other side way down here. You'd be like, dude, Mike, 
Your, your buttons don't match. I know. Are you going to fix that? Probably not. OK. <laughs> um, Mike's family, they didn't have very much money. And so most of his clothes were hand-me-downs from his older brothers. His pants never quite fit him right. They usually had holes in the knees, usually had stains. Mike never tied his shoes, ever. You'd be like, dude, Mike, your shoes are untied. I know. Are you going to fix that? <laughs> Probably not. That's just the kind of guy he was. He was like a walking mess everywhere he went. Now, you also have to know that it took Mike just a little bit longer to do things. Uh, it took him longer to process information. In class, he had somebody helping him out, partially because it was really hard for him to read material uh, just because of his eyesight, but it just took him longer to think of stuff. Uh, the other thing you have to know is that Mike, whenever he saw you, would go out of his way to give you a high five. That's just who he was. He'd see you in the morning and be like, dude, you're here. Awesome. I'm so glad you're here. At our school, they had double doors, and you had to walk into the school because it's like a giant Costco, basically. That's what our schools are like up in the north. And uh, he'd, he'd like wait there in front of the doors, and everybody that came in would be like, I'm glad you're here. High five. Awesome. You started off your day with a high five and a smile. It was a great way to start. He'd see you in, in the hallway and be like, dude, you having a good day? Awesome. High five. Cool. He'd see you at lunchtime. Dude, how you doing? Doing good? Awesome. High five. Boom. And he'd grab a piece of food and walk away. And he would always grab dessert, right? If you had Twinkies, Ding Dongs, Ho-Hos, or cookies, that's what he was going for. You'd just hide those right away, be like, Mike's coming, hide him, hide him, right? Uh, he'd see you at the end of the day and be like, I'm so glad you're here. He saw me once in the grocery store. I was getting like cereal, right? I'm in the cereal aisle, and you know, there's like a thousand boxes of cereal, and I'm just like, oh. He just walks up and goes, Fruit Loops, whoosh, and then walked away. And I was like, whoa, what was that? Oh, Fruit Loops, hi. He's the kind of guy that always left you with a smile on your face. That's just who he was. Now, I remember the day very specifically because it was a big one. Ladies, what day is February 14th? <laughs> Valentine's Day. Guys are like, I don't know. Is that like Thursday? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's an important one. You want to remember that. <laughs> now, I remember Valentine's Day at our middle school was absolutely insane because it was like a giant party the whole time. People brought candy, cards, gifts. It was crazy. Teachers, like, you know how they have the little candy hearts with, like, the words on them? English, you would have to put together crazy weird sentences, and then they would let you eat all the candy and send you to the next teacher with, like, a sugar buzz, and you're like, Gee! right? It was awesome. All day long, they just gave you candy. It was sweet. Uh, for a dollar, you could pay someone in the orchestra to go serenade one of your friends and totally embarrass them in class. It was awesome. Now, I remember standing in the hallway waiting for school to start. And my friend Corey, he was standing here. And in the sixth grade, it was kind of gross. He had a girlfriend and a bunch of us hanging out this way. A few lockers down this way was my friend Jenna. And a few lockers down this way was my friend April. And I remember just standing there waiting for school to start, right? And we're hanging out. And all of a sudden, at the end of the hallway, we have two double doors. And they both opened up. And it was like, ka -ching! And it was like that magic movie moment, you know, when the good guy's fighting the bad guy. And the bad guy hits the good guy, and he goes down. And all of a sudden, the bad guy does a megalomaniacal laugh. And he's like, moo -hoo -ha 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 -ha, I win. And then he starts talking more, and then you know something's going to happen, right? And then slowly, the good guy stands up. And then he looks at the bad guy. And all of a sudden, there's wind. <laughs> and then he looks at the bad guy and goes, not yet bad guy. <laughs> and then there's like this poof, epic fight scene, right? And it's really awesome. It was like that moment. But instead of seeing a superhero, I saw Mike. And immediately, I knew something was going on. Because the first thing I noticed about him was his hair. It wasn't crazy wild all over the place. It wasn't an eagle's nest anymore. It was like not a single hair out of place. It was like this, this beautiful, shiny helmet of hair. And I was just like, oh. I looked down. He's wearing a brand new button-up shirt. All the buttons are in the right holes. I'm just like, oh! I look down even further, and in the sixth grade, he has his first ever brand new pair of pants. His first, not somebody else's. They fit, they're clean, there's no holes, there's no stains. I'm just like, oh! I look at his feet, his shoes were tied. My mind was blown. I was just like, <laughs> right? And then I look up, and I see that he has three neatly wrapped presents. 
And immediately in my head, I knew it was a really big deal. It was a super important day for him. I actually later found out that his mom was the one that wrapped the presents for him and that his older brothers actually helped him get ready for school so that everything looked nice. They all made sure that he was gonna have a great day. So all of a sudden, he walks up to my friend, Jen, over here, and she's getting in a locker. He taps her on the shoulder. And she turns around. She's like, oh, hey, Mike, how's it going? He was super nervous. He wouldn't look at her. He only looked at his shoes. He's like, um, good. I just wanted to say happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for being my friend. All right. Yeah, that's, it. that's what she did. She's like, oh, you didn't have to do that. And he's like, I know. <laughs> and she opened it up. And it was a tiny little teddy bear, about that big, with a little heart on the front that said, Happy Valentine's Day. That was it. And she's just like, oh, Mike, that's so sweet. Thank you. And she gives him this great big hug. And he's just like, <laughs> that was awesome, <laughs> right? So he's got two presents left. He walks around our group of friends all the way over here to my friend Jenna, or, or sorry, April. And she's getting in her locker, and he taps her on the shoulder, and she turns around. She's like, hey, Mike, how's it going? And he's like, still nervous, but now he's got a little smile on his face and a little more confidence. He's like, I'm good. Um, I just wanted to say happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for being my friend. And she's like, oh, you didn't have to do that. And he's like, I know. <laughs> right? And so he, she opens it up, and it was like her jaw hit the floor. It was like, poof. she's like, dude, thank you so much. It was one of those giant one pound chocolate Hershey's kisses. Uh-huh, a whole pound of chocolate. And she just looks at him and she's like, dude, I don't think you understand. I seriously love chocolate. She put that in her locker, and she gave him this giant bear hug. She actually picked him up off the ground. It was waving him around like a little rag doll. Yeah, his legs are like, woo! She puts him down on the ground, and he has the biggest smile I've ever seen on any human being on the planet ever. It was like ear-to-ear -ear grin. If his smile would have been bigger, he would have had a flip-top head. That's how big his smile was, right? So he's got one present left, and he turns and he looks right at Corey's girlfriend. It's like you guys are good at prediction or something. <laughs> good job, teachers. Yeah, you guys have all seen the movies, right? I got to tell you that Corey's reaction was not what we expected because Corey was standing here. All of us were standing here and all around, and, and we saw what happened over here with Jenna. We saw what happened over here with April, and we knew that all he wanted to say was happy Valentine's Day, thanks for being my friend. That's all he wanted to say, and we knew that. But Corey decided to act differently, and here's what he did. He's standing here like this, and his mic starts to walk up. He gets to about right here, and all of a sudden, Corey turns and blocks his path. He takes his hand, makes a pointer finger, and goes, not now, not ever, boom, knocks a gift out of his hand, and then steps up like he wants to fight. Now, this is not something that we were normal to. We hadn't seen physical violence, and that's just not something you did. And all of a sudden, a bunch of us guys, we grabbed Corey. We dragged him off down the hall. We were like, dude, why would you do that? Seriously, man, that was not cool, man. That's our friend Mike. Why, why would you do that? All he wanted to do was say thank you. That was not cool. What is wrong with you? And somebody ran down. They grabbed the present. They gave it back to Mike. And they were like, dude, Mike, we are so, so sorry, man. That was not cool. You go ahead, and you give her that gift. And all of a sudden, he's like, had time to think about it. It only took about nine or 10 seconds. It was actually pretty quick, but it was long enough for him to process. And he said this, I get it. I'm not good enough to say thank you to my friends. Fine. And rather than giving her the gift, he walked out the end of the hallway, threw the gift in the garbage, and left school. Now, we started to learn something about Corey that day. We started to learn that he was the kind of person that couldn't support anyone. He was the kind of person that, that couldn't even really support himself. And that's a hard thing because it turns out that his actions were very negative. His friends, the people that he's supposed to love and care about and believe in, he wasn't nice to us. He'd call us names and make fun of us. He'd try and make us cry. There's a difference between teasing your friends, like we make fun of each other, but we still love that person, right? He wouldn't do it that way. He would intentionally say things to try and make you cry, and then he'd make fun of you for it. 
He made fun of you for everything, and that was his friends that he was doing that to. You know what? His people that weren't his friends, it was open season, and it was brutal. He was not very nice to those people. He was cruel. I'm glad we didn't have cell phones at that time because he would have been a terrible, terrible person on one of those things. You know what? By the end of our eighth grade year, he didn't have very many friends. He didn't have a lot of people that wanted to take care of him. And you know what? That's kind of a sad thing. You know what? My friend Mike, though, all of a sudden, by the end of our eighth grade year, almost every single person in the school was his friend. Because he didn't care what you look like, what you sound like, where you're from, the language you spoke, the color of your skin, if you had tons of money, if you had absolutely nothing. He didn't care about that. You were a person that shared space with him every day. And because of that, he wanted to be your friend and treat you kindly. That's it. So ladies and gentlemen, our whole thing is very simple. Be nice, take care of each other. And really fast, I'm gonna like, can I like get two, two, three more minutes? I'm gonna go really, really fast. I know that there are some of you right now that might be thinking, wait a minute, I don't think I have that kind of support system. I don't think I have people that believe in me. You know what? There are people in this world that believe in you and you've never even met them. There are people in this world that want you to be happy and they don't even know you. I know because I've seen them. As a matter of fact, my wife and I, back before we had children, we actually got to go out and do things like go on dates and have fun. If you think your parents are boring, it's your fault. Yeah. They were awesome, amazing, wonderful young people, and then you came in the world and sucked all the fun right out of them. <laughs> totally true. Yeah. My wife and I used to go out every week, and we'd have dinner together and, and like have a date night. It was awesome before we had kids. And I remember we had date, uh, date night and this little Mexican restaurant, and there was this family next to us, like 20 people, they were awesome. My wife and I actually stopped talking to each other, and we totally just were like watching this family because they were amazing. And they were so much fun. It was grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, sisters, all these people, and we all got finished at the same time, and we go out front, and in front, rather than like leaving and going home like normal people, we sat there and just watched these people again. And all of a sudden, there was like this little wishing well, and there was this little tiny girl. She's probably about three, three and a half or so. And she walks up to the wishing well, puts her hands on the edge, stands up on her tippy toes, looks inside, sees all the coins and goes, mommy, daddy, we're rich and starts to climb into the wishing well. And all the brothers and sisters and cousins are like, no, 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 stop. That's not, that's not what you do. You take a coin, you put a wish to it and you throw it in and then your wish comes true. She was at the perfect age where she was like, oh yeah. And all of a sudden she's like, daddy, give me money. <laughs> Dad's like, oh man, it starts early. So parents and grandparents are all emptying their pockets, giving all this change out, right? There was a little boy. He was probably like two years old. He didn't get it. He's just like, money, throw, money, throw, money, throw. No more money. I'm bored, <laughs> right? And so they're telling her how to do this. They say, you take your coin, you put it up in the air, you close your eyes, you take a deep breath, make a wish, throw it in. She's like, okay. She's like, okay, I'm ready. Got it. Here we go. And all of a sudden they're like, wait, stop, 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 stop. We forgot to tell you the most important part about making a wish. What did they forget to tell her? You can't, don't tell anybody, right? You can't tell anybody. I think it's the dumbest rule ever, right? But they didn't say it in a normal way because they're like little kids. They're like, we forgot to tell you. Don't tell nobody your wish because that's bad. And all of a sudden she's like, but I really wanted to tell my mom and dad. And she starts crying, right? And you know if there's a little kid crying that somebody's going to get beat. Maybe you guys live in a different part of the country than I do. I'm from Idaho. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, like, they're like, no, 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 stop crying. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, wait, 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 wait. How about this? If it's your first time making a wish, you can tell everybody your wish. And if you're standing next to the person making the wish, you also get to tell people your wish. So all of a sudden, it was a free-for-all. Everybody's telling their wishes. It was so awesome. There were two boys, like, 9 and 10 years old. They both throw their coins in. He's like, dude, what'd you wish for? He's like, I wish for, like, a battleship. What would you do with that? Drive it to school. <laughs> Dude, what did you wish for? Helicopter regiment. What's that? A ton of helicopters, duh, right? They're getting into it. There's like a girl down here. She was probably seventh grade, eighth grade. And she looks around. She's like super nervous. She's like, I just wish Tony would like me because he's like so cute. <laughs> Even the parents got into it. The parents were hilarious. The dad was like, honey, brand new Toyota Sequoia, limited edition, drop down, spinners on the wheels, six disc, in dash, DVD player, thumping system, what? <laughs> Wife is like, honey, month long vacation, no kids. And he's like, ooh, that's a good one. And all of a sudden, this little girl has been waiting patiently the whole time. And she's like, are you guys ready? And they're like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry, honey. You go ahead. Go ahead. You make your wish. We're ready now. She's like, okay. She takes her coin, closes her eyes, takes a deep breath, and throws it in. She's like, Mom, Dad, 
are you ready? Are you ready? I'm so excited. <laughs> and the parents are like, yeah, yeah. I actually heard the dad say this. We're ready, honey. I hope it's on sale at Toys R Us. <laughs> What'd you wish for? And she looks at her mom and dad and goes, mom, dad, I wished for more butterflies. The mom was a puddle. She's just like, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. <laughs> the dad's kind of like, it kind of makes my Toyota Sequoia look kind of silly now, doesn't it? <laughs> and I, it took me a long time to figure it out. But that little girl, I, I finally realized, butterflies make her happy. They bring joy to her soul. And if butterflies make her happy, they'll make other people happy. If there's more butterflies in the world, more people will be happy. Her wish was for you guys. Her wish was that you guys would be happy. That's a big deal. Now, I got to let you know, I know some of you were like, dude, I was fine with unicorns, but then you said butterflies, and I'm like, nope, draw the line of butterflies. <laughs> I know. I don't care who you are on the planet. You could be the biggest, toughest, thickest skin ombre on the planet. You ride a Harley Davidson and have a mohawk. You'd be like, I'm tough and mean. And that guy will see a butterfly and all of a sudden be like, butterfly. Don't laugh, <laughs> right? I don't care who you are. Try and not smile the next time you see a butterfly. Better yet, watch somebody else watching a butterfly, and it's absolutely hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, we want you to be nice, take care of each other, be kind, support each other. My time is done. Thank you so very much, you guys. Have an awesome rest of the year.